Well, I did tell you that we were going to be uh, taking care of your eyes, and hey, would I lie to you? No, because this is our regular season, Arizona Eye Health, and on this Monday, let me reintroduce you to Dr. Gary Morgan and uh, Dr. Larry Holly. Uh, am I pronouncing that correctly? As in buddy. Uh, good. I thank you so much. Um, I just heard about another case of macular degeneration just in the last two days, I suppose. And somebody said uh, that a, uh, an acquaintance uh, discovered that he had macular degeneration. How many people are we talking about? How common is this? We j chatted about this last week. Yes. Um, basically, one in five families are affected by macular degeneration. And the disease itself is more common than um, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and breast cancer combined. Now, I, I find that to be astounding, and I would imagine probably that an awful lot of people just said, whoops, you got my attention, uh, because they said, I had no idea that we were talking about an eye condition that was, was that common. Is it the most common problem, serious problem with eyes? It's probably one of the most common problems that, that can lead to blindness after 65 years of age. So it's a, it's a serious disease, and just, it's a scary disease. I just learned a little bit uh, in preparing for this conversation about the pigments that are involved. Could you share that with us? Um, there are pigments in the eye. They're called keratinoids or carotenoids, however you want to pronounce that. And there's three of them in the eye that are found, mesozeaxanthin, lutein, and zeaxanthin. You promise that we won't have to pronounce them when we go to our doctor. That's right, but you're going to learn a lot today, Pat. <laughs> well, I want to because I want to find out about why we have them and why they're necessary and what we do about them. Well, it, if I could answer that, as far sure. as the um, macular pigment, we're all born with a certain level of macular pigment, and I think we had a um, graphic that showed the back of the eye. Um, as far as the, uh, the... There it is. There we go. So as you can see there, as light comes in to the front of the eye, it focuses on a pinpoint of tissue in the back of the eye, the macula. That's where our, our vision is the sharpest. Over on the right side of the screen there, we, we blew that area up. And as you can see, light hitting the tissue initially, there's that yellow band there. That's where the macula pigment resides. And the more macular pigment that we have, the less light can make it through to the lower parts or more delicate parts of the retina, which is where damage can take place. So we want to have a healthy, thick layer of macular pigment there to protect the eye. Now, for the light that does make it through into the lower levels of the retina, which is represented by that red band, um, it is then it, it can there uh, turn into free radicals, which can cause damage to the tissue. So a second function of macular pigment is it acts as an antioxidant to quench those free radicals as they're coming back into the retinal tissue which is shown by that kind of that lighter blue um, area that we've, we've put on that, on that diagram. So it's a shielding issue. Two parts, shielding light coming in, and then the light that does make it in, it acts as an antioxidant to quench the free radicals that are formed within the tissue. So it protects in two ways. All right, and so if I happen to live in this country uh, where nutritionally uh, I don't get the proper amount of one part or the other, what do I do? Well, there is a study done at the University of Utah School of Medicine, and they analyzed the ability of these three carotenoids to quench the singlet oxygen, which is um, a leading cause of free radical formation in the eye. And basically, free radical formation in singlet oxygen is a... a a description of the oxidative process that goes on within the retina. And this has damaging effects on the tissue of the retina. Um, they found that mesozeaxanthin, which uh, potentially has the highest effect of squenching or eliminating this singlet oxygen, and lutein was second, or uh, zeaxanthin was second, followed up by lutein. The combination of all three of those provided a much more efficient way of eliminating that singlet oxygen. Um, they also found the combination of all three of them was two and a half, about two and a half times more uh, 
uh, effective in eliminating this than just lutein alone. And the significance of that is, is that lutein is a supplement that's commonly found in eye supplements on the market today, and it's the weakest of the three. I, all right, so. so if I happen to uh, find that I'm limited nutritionally in vitamin B or vitamin A or vitamin D or whatever, I can take supplements. Well, what about this? Correct. And, and that's, and really, you know, those carotenoid pigments, we have to get them in our diet. But in a typical American diet, we're only getting about one to one and a half milligrams per day. To build macular pigment, we need on, along the lines of 15 milligrams per day. So we have to ingest the, uh, this, these uh, carotenoids. Um, in our offices, uh, if we find a patient as a good candidate for this based on um, examination of their macula, their family history, their smoking history, we can prescribe an ocular treatment program that contains all three of these carotenoids. By the way, did we show the graph? I didn't uh, get a chance to find out if we showed this or not. Uh, but if, uh, if you can, at least it gives you some kind of an idea of what we're talking about regarding this. Uh, Gary, uh, tell us just briefly about what we're seeing. Well, again, what we have there is it's showing that um, the lutein is in orange, zeaxanthin is in red, mesozeaxanthin is in blue, and that's the, each compound's ability to quench free radicals in the retina. The green is showing the combination of all three, and as Dr. Holly stated, um, the, the combination of those three is two and a half times greater than lutein by itself, and most people think that taking lutein is all they need for their eyes, when in fact that's not the case. So do I go to the health food store and get a supplement? There are, there are three carotenoids found in the macula, um, um, and they all have to be ingested. So everybody's born with a certain amount of macular pigment, um, and it varies from individual to individual. Um, those that have low, level, low levels of macular pigment are going to be more at significant risk. So. You have zeaxanthin and lutein, which is found in our food source and in our diet. Unfortunately, only about one to two milligrams is ingested by the normal individual because we just don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. We actually need about 15 plus milligrams of this to effectively fight off the oxidation process. Since we're almost completely out of time, where do I find the uh, ability to uh, confidently say, I'm taking care of my pigments? Do I have to have an eye exam? You need an eye exam. It starts there. And for those patients, again, that we find that are at greatest risk, um, we can prescribe this ocular treatment in office. These types of supplements, although they are you know, considered over the counter, it's not something you're going to find at your Walgreens or CVS. Another um, reason why it is that you should be paying attention when we say for good eye health, for proper eye health, you can contact Arizona's eye health awareness doctors across the valley, as a matter of fact. There's so many people that are participating in this program. You have the website, you have the phone number, and hopefully, at least at this point, you have more information on macular degeneration generation and what you can do about it in your family and for your family. This is the McMahon Group.